BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Node 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And just a quick reminder every Monday is Zodiac Mondays. Wednesday is an Ask Me Anything. That's an AMA, so please drop your questions below for things that you would like discussed here on the show. And Friday is an Anything Goes. Any subject is fair game, mostly talking about true crime, serial killers, the Zodiac Killer, but any subject is welcome. All right, so please share some ideas in the comment section about what you would like to hear about on this channel, and let's get started. Okay, hello everybody. Today is Thursday, and on Thursdays the, this year, I've been doing a regular segment about the disappearance of Donna Lass from 1970. And first, I would like to remind you guys that you can download the audio version of this program for free at Launchpad 1. There's a link to that in the description box. It's under the same name, Black Box Online Radio. But the easiest way to find it is just by clicking on the description box of the episodes here on the channel. And a great way to support the channel in addition to listening is to visit Amazon.com and you can look at a copy of the book Killer on a White Horse by me, Ned Dahan. It's a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it's in the category of fiction. And of course, there is the Teespring page. Feel free to have a look at some of the merchandise, all kinds of things over there. And remember, being weird is not a crime. But yes, Donna last disappeared on September 6th of 1970. She was working the 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift at the Sahara Tahoe Hotel and Casino. And on Thursdays for the past several weeks, and I'm hoping that this series is going to continue, I've been doing this regular segment trying to examine the case from a couple different areas. And I'm going to do some things in this episode that I don't think are perhaps the most earth-shattering, groundbreaking investigative techniques. I'm going to respond to the History Channel's episodes on their show Hunting for the Zodiac Killer, and then I'm going to talk about two suspects who are both Zodiac suspects as well as people who are suspects in the disappearance of Donna Lass. Now, as I've been going through these episodes... I will fully admit that I became aware of Donna Lass because she is a possible Zodiac killer victim. And this relates to a particular card that was mailed in in 1970 that could possibly, potentially, maybe link Donna Lass's disappearance to the Zodiac killer mystery. Although I have to confess to you that's hanging by a thread. Now I'm really leaning toward Donna Lass just being either abducted or attacked by somebody else. And... Before, though, I say anything else, I'm going to be guilty of something else. I'm guilty of something that I shouldn't be guilty of. And I was talking about the show on the History Channel about the Zodiac Killer, and I was referring to their main investigators in that one as, what are their names, uh, Sal and Garib or Sal and Garvey? I don't know why I thought the guy's name was Garvey. Turns out his name is actually Ken. I don't know how I got Ken out of the name Garvey, but I was reminded of um, something that I was talking about in the True Crime Talk radio segments about the Beavis and Butthead fire incident, but there's also a one time when Senator Fritz Hollings tried to talk about Beavis and Butthead on the um, Senate floor. It's actually in the chambers, not the floor, but this is what he said. But the truth of the matter is, and we've got to acknowledge it, it's the most pervasive of parents all children see. Uh, we got this, was it Buffcoat and Beaver or Beaver and something else? That they had. I haven't seen it. I don't watch it. But whatever it is, it was at 7 o'clock, Buffcoat, and they put it on now at 10.30, I think. They've pleaded guilty, and they'll do it as long as you and I have hearings, but we just can't have hearings like we've had now for 40 years and get nowhere. Okay, so the point is, we're all human. I mean, Sal and Garvey might be able to forgive me. By the way, I'm just going to call that guy Garvey from now on, and I'm not the biggest fan of that show on the History Channel about the Zodiac Killer, because... 
I find that they get caught up in superficial discussions. I've really noticed this about a lot of TV presenters. Um, I call it the Malzbergian principle, because there was this talk show host named Steve Malzberg. I think he's now on RT, but he used to have a different show. And he would talk about, you know, discussions of any subject, whether it's politics or sports. But he would always just stay on the service and never get to the heart of the issue. I mean, if you were to be like, oh, I'm driving down the street, hey, look, a stop sign, then he would say something like, Oh, well, there are other types of signs. Are you aware that there are yield signs or crossing signs? It would never get to the heart of the issue. It would be always just keeping things on the surface. And I find that that show on the History Channel about the Zodiac Killer tends to do that. Now, this series that I've been doing about Donna Lass is not exactly a Zodiac Killer episode because... Donna Lass's case has been unsolved. We aren't 100% sure who abducted her. It really is just about exploring what happened to Donna back in 1970 when she was working at the nurse's station in the Sahara Tahoe Hotel and Casino. But somebody in the comment section recommended that I watch the History Channel's program, the Hunting for the Zodiac Killer episodes about Donna Lass, and it appears that they have more than one because I pulled up one that I got off of Google. It said it was on YouTube Season 1, Episode 4, that talked about the disappearance of Donna Lass, and that episode was lacking something because the person who recommended it to me said that they had interviewed Donna Lass's roommate, and she... Whoever the roommate that they're talking about that wasn't addressed by name in the comments section was not in Season 1, Episode 4, so there must be another one, and perhaps I can respond to that next week. But firstly, these two guys, Sal and Garvey, said that the disappearance of Donna Lass may be the key to solving the Zodiac Killer mystery. Now, I can only agree with that statement if your suspect is Lawrence Kane. Lawrence Kane is a suspect who receives a lot more attention than some of the other people, particularly one guy that I'll talk about later on. But Lawrence Kane is a Zodiac Killer suspect that comes in and out of the discussions. From time to time, I can see a lot of people requesting episodes on Lawrence Kane in the comments section. He becomes one that people talk about very frequently in internet circles. Since I've been reading up about the disappearance of Donna Lass, I have found that Lawrence Kane he does have genuine connections to Nevada. He is also a suspect in the 1974 murder of Dana Lull. Dana Lull was abducted from a lover's lane with her boyfriend, Roy Topai. Roy Topai actually ran away and hid in a ravine because the perpetrator had concentrated all of his energy on Dana Lull, and she was abducted. Later on, she was found in a mine shaft, actually. She had been shot with a twenty two caliber firearm, and it's an unsolved case. So, some people think that Lawrence Kane should be eliminated as a Zodiac Killer suspect, If even if he did. If he did indeed murder Dana Lull, because that is quite different than the Zodiac activities. That is concentrating on the female victim, as opposed to targeting the male first, the way that the Zodiac did at Lake Herman Road, possibly Blue Rock Springs, but definitely, definitely at Lake Berryessa. And through the wonders of reading on the internet. I read in one place that Lawrence Kane was working in the Sahara Tahoe Hotel and Casino at the same time that Donna Lass was working there. Now that was just a comment on the internet. Do I believe that? Not quite. I would need something much more substantial than someone just posting that online without citing the source and where that information was coming from. Like somebody was asking me in the comment section about um, what do I think about the report that Donna Lass was last seen walking with a blonde haired man. My response is simple. Until I see some more credible info, I'm going to put that in the same category um, that I, I just need more info to convince me. As far as the sighting of Donna Lass walking with the blonde haired man, I don't think that that actually happened. If you can show me some police report that says that they have this eyewitness who talked about that, maybe I will agree with you. But you'd have to wonder, why is there no composite sketch if somebody saw this man 
or why isn't there a better witness description of like his height, his weight, what was he wearing? I think that is an internet rumor, or it's a rumor that started somewhere. As far as Lawrence Kane working in the hotel where Donna Lass was, I, well, the, the rumor is that Don, Lawrence Kane worked in a real estate office in the Sahara Tahoe, and if you've ever been to a casino, you'll know that they have lots of stores, boutiques, and they do have things like real estate offices. They're all kinds of places where people can do things because many people come in and out of casinos and this was also a hotel so you have guests staying there it's a very good business opportunity place if lawrence kane is indeed in the sahara tahoe at the same time as donna lass of course you're going to be suspicious about him and then you would have to be even more suspicious about him being the zodiac killer what what, what would be the um what would be the thinking in that that Okay, if Lawrence Kane did indeed abduct on the lass and perhaps murder her on September 6th of 1970, well, then this possible Zodiac crime just turned out to be someone who was also a possible Zodiac killer suspect for a different reason. And I do mean that for a different reason. Lawrence Kane was identified because Harvey Hines provided a solution to the Z13 cipher that said, Name Kane born in 1924, and he thought that it was a Jewish man. Lawrence Kane's birth name was Lawrence Klein. Kane was an alias that he used, but he was using that in 68 and 69 at the time of the Zodiac murders. So, I mean, what exactly is that? Harvey Hines solves the three, sorry, solves the Z13 cipher that shows Lawrence Kane. Oh yeah, it turns out he's not actually the Zodiac killer, but he did abduct and murder one of the possible Zodiac victims. I think that that is too much of a stretch, and I think that that is just a mishmash of internet theories thrown together, if I can be very frank. But as far as Dana Lull goes, she is a victim who isn't really talked about in Zodiac circles. I learned about her from you guys in the comments section. You, you always leave excellent comments. And I think that case is very different because that simply seems like an attack on two people and very low probability of it having anything to do with the Zodiac. I mean, there really is just this Lawrence Kane connection. And, um, you know, it's possible. I mean, it's possible. If anything, he would be a more viable suspect in the murder of Dana Lowell than being the Zodiac killer. I'm not saying that he did it. I certainly can't prove that. But I am suspicious. In Season 1, Episode 4 of this show, The Hunt for the Zodiac Killer, they alluded to some possible um, activities that the perpetrator who may have abducted Donna Lass could have done. And I'm trying to get the phrasing right, because Donna Lass has not been confirmed to have been murdered all we know is that she was last seen in the Sahara Tahoe Hotel and Casino, where she worked at the first aid station. She was a nurse. She was working the 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift. Ray Grant, who wrote the book Zodiac Killer Solved, described it as almost like she could be her own boss. It's a very um, independent position, so it seems. And he also wrote that she was down the hallway, more or less, from any other part of the casino or any other employees, a secluded area, um, almost an, an isolated area, almost, not completely. So um, I think that you can get the idea. She wasn't around too many people. She was last seen at 1.40 a.m. by a woman named Joan Bentley. And what happened to Donna after that, we aren't completely sure. It's possible that she was abducted or lured away from the nurse's station at 1.45 and instantly, I was thinking that, okay, well, she must have been abducted. Someone must have lured her to the parking lot, pushed her into a car, pulled out a gun, say, if you scream, I'll kill you, and then coerced her into a vehicle. Then they drove over to a place and they murdered her. I mean, that's something that came to mind as an early instinct. But you guys brought to my attention in the comments section that somebody may have murdered Donna in the Sahara Tahoe Hotel and then her body was transported out later on, or hidden in something like a dumpster or a garbage bin, and that person was trying to buy time until they um, the evidence would uh, be no longer present in the Sahara Tahoe, as well as using things like bleach and ammonia, destroying all types of physical evidence where Donna had been. This is an unsolved case. On this show, The Hunt for the Zodiac Killer, 
they brought up some theory that they're excavating these sites. I was like digging holes in the ground, and they're saying now it's possible that bodies were buried in those places, then dug up and moved to a different location. And I think that that is so weird. Like, are they suggesting that Donna Lass was abducted from the Sahara Tahoe, then driven to some place, I guess, in the mountainous area surrounding it, or the rural wooded areas surrounding the South Lake Tahoe, surrounding State Line, Nevada, murdered, buried in the ground, and then her body would have been removed and then placed in a different location. In fact, I'll just play the clip. You can have a listen to them in their own words. That you can't rule out. The forensics team is now four hours into the excavation. So you there's deep to me. Yeah, but, but I, I don't see anything. There's nothing here that would tell me to keep going. Okay. We've done everything we could in this area. She's taking her exit photographs now. I'll take my exit photographs, and then we're going to clear the scene. The evidence that a body was here and then removed is eerily reminiscent of the evidence found on the Mount Diablo search. Got an area here that was dug out, reburied. Leads me to believe there was a, something here before. Is this the place where Donna Lass's remains were? I don't know. But the facts are three dogs hit in one location. Human remains were here at one time or another. This is why I have a problem with that show. Um, firstly, is this where Donna Lass's remains were? I don't know. Well, thanks. I mean, we know that we could have given that response before we watched the episode. And also, I really don't like this idea of how they're trying to connect this to Mount Diablo. And are they insinuating that the Zodiac Killer buried the bodies of victims and then dug them up and then moved them to other places? That sounds like a sorry excuse for saying that they didn't find anything. Now, as far as, um, I'll provide a little bit of context. They did, uh, some cadaver dog searches, and the dogs apparently located three different places. I'm not sure what to make of that, but I definitely don't think it's very helpful and relevant to Donna Lass's disappearance without finding any physical remains. I mean, they didn't find anything. There could have been Native American burial grounds. I mean, we're talking decades would have passed. Decades since... Don Alas had disappeared when they were doing these cadaver dog searches, and they're also using another forensic technique using larvae, but, I mean, they have nothing. This is just like one of those corners in a bookstore dedicated to philosophy, the meaning of nothingness. That's what we should call it. It's not hunting for the Zodiac Killer. It's like how to rephrase the word nothing for 44 minutes. Well, we didn't find anything, but... Um, well, somebody died at some point in human history, and somebody had once lived in South Lake Tahoe, and, um, well, people are also near Mount Diablo, but not the people that we were talking about or looking for or have any connection to this mystery. That's why I have a problem with this show, and if you think I'm overly critical about the, um, the, um, hunting for the Zodiac Killer, the hunt for the Zodiac Killer show on the History, uh, channel... Please weigh in in the comments section. Now, there are some out there who say that this is a program that may not be the most enlightening and the most wonderful, but they like Sal and Garvey as characters, and they also think that it um, attracts a lot of people to the case, and it gets them curious about many of the aspects of the Zodiac Killer mystery, particularly the suspects Ross Sullivan and Lawrence Kane. But I said that there was another Zodiac Killer suspect that I wanted to talk about. Back in 2020, during the springtime, I think it was, I did an episode on a suspect named Kenneth Lester German. You can hear it on uh, YouTube. It's still up there. Zodiac Killer, Kenneth Lester German. It's done more like a pure podcast, one of the black box recordings, but it does have some sparks in the background to keep you entertained. And I was talking about a guy named Philip Powers, who had came forward with his suspect, Kenneth Lester German, who 
is his own grandfather. And the reason why I did that episode was mostly to say that, okay, now it seems like the Zodiac Killer mystery has now been passed on to a new generation. It's no longer my father was the Zodiac Killer. Instead, it's my grandfather was the Zodiac Killer. But there is a very particular detail in that story that is making its way into this episode, and that is that Philip Powers claimed that Kenneth Lester German had a direct connection to Donna Lass. And first I'll provide a little bit of an introduction about him. Someone has posted a quote from Philip Powers, and her name is C. Flores. She posted it on Tapa Talk. Philip Powers wrote, This is his grandson. He was seen driving a police car and wearing a uniform. My mother and aunts remember him living in Sui's son while he worked. She's pretty sure her papa, Luther German, was in the Navy, and her dad, Kenneth German, was in the Air Force. She remembers him having a mental breakdown. He said something like, I'm having a mental breakdown and getting kicked off the police force. At one point, she woke up with two officers pulling her out of bed and questioning her where her father was. But the connection to the disappearance of Donna Lass is that he claims that Kenneth Lester German was in possession of two photographs of a woman strongly resembling Donna Lass's um, appearance. If we look at the photos, I think that if these are the exact ones, it's kind of hard for me to believe that they wouldn't, um, that they would actually use these because one of the women in the photo appears to be much older than Donna Lass. Donna Lass was 25 at the time of her disappearance. What The woman who is on the right-hand side looks much, much older, and the woman on the left-hand side looks um much more similar to Donna Lass. Maybe she has a slightly different nose shape, but it's hard to tell with such a blurry image. And I'm going to be very clear with you guys. I don't think that Kenneth Lester German is the strongest Zodiac killer suspect. I just thought that it stood out to me when I was reading that stuff last year that there was um, possibly this firsthand connection to Donna Lass. And the source material for Philip Powers and Kenneth Lester German mostly came from two newspaper articles that had been uploaded online. One of them was from the Daily Republic, and I couldn't even find the other one. I was going to go back and pull them up and um, just go through them with you guys right here on this episode. But I they may have been taken down. The one from the Daily Republic had the headline, but the entire body of the article had been removed and it was just advertisements. It seems like... Kenneth Lester German is not a suspect who is even hanging by a thread. To use a different uh, metaphor, that flame is, has almost burnt out. And in the last uh, time I talked about uh, Kenneth Lester German, I found that Philip Powers was running a Twitter page, and I was going to invite him to come on Black Box Online Radio because I was doing an episode about his grandfather as a Zodiac Killer suspect, and Philip Powers seems to be the chief proponent of that theory, but then I found that the Twitter page was no longer active, and it had only been active for six weeks, so it seems like everything to do with Kenneth Lester German is um, someone... Well, it's just, it's not really in the minds of a lot of people, and they aren't taking him very seriously. But when I was reading that, it really caught my attention that he zoned in on the disappearance of Donna Lass. And... I mean, we don't know who abducted Donna Lass, but I think that we're going to um, have to get in touch with some more documents from the police, from the case file, because people can throw internet rumors around all day long, and people can also provide these blurry photographs and be like, hey, look, my grandfather was in possession of two photos of Donna Lass. And then you can also say, well, yeah, Donna Lass was buried in the mountains of South Lake Tahoe, and then her body was dug up and then moved to a different location. Anybody could say that if they had no DNA or they didn't have any type of direct physical evidence to link Donna Lass to the crime scene. Well, uh, somebody was definitely buried here. I mean, we don't know who. We don't know when, but somebody was here once. I mean, maybe 80 or 90 years ago, maybe it was yesterday, but somebody was here once. 
I'm really trying to control myself when I talk about Sal and Garvey because I know they're putting on a show for the general public and they have to tone down the language, but that's just not helpful. And they are indeed insinuating that there is this Zodiac connection because they also brought up Mount Diablo. If they just wanted to talk about the disappearance of Donna Lass, I mean, then maybe you would have a, a stronger connection that th that's your theory. Donna Lass left home at 5.45 p.m. For, for, for the Monteverdi apartment complex on Pioneer Trail near, U near U.S. Route 50. She walked to State Line Nevada at the Sahara Tahoe Hotel and Casino where she worked at the nurse's a station, the first aid station, down somewhat of a secluded hallway. She did her shift 6 p.m. to roughly 1.40 in the morning. She saw the last patient at 1.30, who, I mean, I believe everything's wrapped up and out the door at 1.38, 1.39, 1.40 p. 1.40 a.m. it is now. Someone was last looking at Donna Lass at that point. She was never seen again. She was supposed to complete an entry in the nurse's logbook, but that entry was not complete. Then... Whatever happened to Donna after that is a mystery. If you were to say that your theory is somebody abducted her, they murdered her, they drove her body into the mountains of South Lake Tahoe, they buried her in the ground, and then they moved her to a different location later on to confuse the authorities, you'd have a, you'd have a my curiosity page, and I would be like, all right, I want to hear it out. But when you're going to try and connect that to the Zodiac Killer and say the Zodiac is also burying bodies at Mount Diablo, you don't have my curiosity page, and I. I'm barely, barely willing to listen to your theory because the Zodiac Killer did not bury the bodies of victims. Not at Lake Herman Road, not at Blue Rock Springs, not at Lake Berryessa, and definitely not at the Paul Stein murder, which was in Presidio Heights. I mean, no, Paul Stein was in a taxi cab. Darlene Farron and Mike Michaud at Blue Rock Springs were also sitting inside of their car. I reject any of these theories that the Zodiac Killer murdered somebody and buried the body of the victim, and that includes Donna Lass, if that's your theory, because the Zodiac did not mess around with the body's post-mortem. Yes, the Zodiac cut off a piece of Paul Stein's shirt. Yes, the Zodiac moved Paul Stein's body in the taxi cab, but that's not even really messing around with his body. That's stealing the keys and the wallet and cutting off a piece of Paul Stein's shirt. Those things are not about, like, mutilations or burials or relocating the bodies to different places. Absolutely not in the canonical crimes. Even if you're somebody who thinks that Sherry Jo Bates was a genuine Zodiac Killer victim, murdered um, October 30th, 1966 in Riverside, to the best of our knowledge, her body was not moved any substantial distance post-mortem, and I do mean substantial distance, like buried in the ground and then relocated to a different place. All of those things that they just talked about in that clip are not present. Sorry, Sal and Garvey. I don't agree with that um, hypothesis at all. I don't care what kind of bugs and mites you found in the ground that um, you think supports that hypothesis. I do not agree with that. As far as Lawrence Kane, though, I view him more as a thorn in my side. Lawrence Kane is a Zodiac killer suspect that I find that I'm not always completely sure about how to respond to some of these things. And I find that you guys in the comment section provide some pretty strong rebuttals, like when I want to challenge Lawrence Kane as a Zodiac killer suspect. And I would like to... um Maybe for the next episode, I'll, I'll see if I can track down something definitive to say whether or not he was in the Sahara Tahoe Hotel and Casino. That would be a good starting point. And then, from that point, we can find out, well, is there any connection between Lawrence Kane and Donna Lass? I mean, because the murder of Dana Lull is somewhat similar to the murder of Donna Lass in the sense that, okay, someone is abducted and taken away. Now, if they want to insinuate that... Donna Lass was also buried, and Dana Lull was buried, i.e. thrown into a mine shaft. I can comprehend that. The Zodiac Killer, no. But then, as I said, the probability angle of connecting someone whose name just happens to appear in the Z-13 cipher, that would require a larger conspiracy, which I don't believe is necessary at the time being. So, I think you can see where I stand on the issue. I think there's insufficient evidence to say that Lawrence Kane did anything to Donna Lass. I mean, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but insufficient evidence. 
there is almost zero evidence that Don Alas was ever buried in the mountains of Lake Tahoe with that region. I should say the mountains of a lake. The mountains of the Lake Tahoe region, and then move to a different location. What are you talking about, Sal and Garvey? Give me a break. And then I would really need to learn more about Kenneth Lester German and at least see if those um, original news reports about him come out. But I think the photos... Um, well, definitely one of them is not Donna Lass. The other one does actually resemble her a lot. But what do you guys think? I'll listen to anything you have to say, and uh, please feel free to put your ideas down in the comments section below. Also, I appeared on the Planet X Filmworks channel last weekend with Mike Morford and, of course, the host Ross, and we were talking about the Zodiac Killer film from 2007, the one with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, the David Fincher film, we did a review and a discussion, talking about some things in the real-life case, talking a lot about Robert Graysmith and his real-life uh, book, as well as the way that Graysmith was portrayed on film as played by Jake Gyllenhaal, and of course, um, everything Zodiac, Under the Sun and In the Darkness. But I was just in contact with Mike Morford about something else. And he, um, I, I asked him a question about an unrelated issue, and he responded to me by saying, By the way, I found an interesting case similar to Donna Lass. In July of 1977, Bryn Rainey vanished from the Sahara Hotel upon showing up for her 2 a.m. shift. Bryn Rainey, spelled B-R-Y-N-N-R-A-I-N-E-Y. That will also be something I hope to do on a future episode of this show. And the Sahara Tahoe Hotel working... Her 2 a.m. shift. Donna Lass worked 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., and Bryn Rainey started her shift at 2 a.m. I, 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 th I bet you're already starting to connect some dots, and you're already starting to think about something. I definitely am, but thank you to Morph for sharing that with me. One more time, you can hear our discussion on the Planet X Filmworks channel, and I'm also the host of the Zodiac Killer Channel's Interview with the Experts series. Morph has appeared on there as well. There are also some Interviews with other guests, including Mike Rodelli, that is out on their uh, channel now, as well as the documentary series Obsession into Darkness. Lots of good stuff over there. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I know it's jumping all over the place, talking about the History Channel, talking about two suspects and um, this photo connection. But sometimes you got to go all over the map to get everywhere. Okay, that's all for me now. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com, and I will see you on the on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.